ever end up being in these videos? When's my time to shine? Time to go. Hello? Yeah, this is Kiva. For real? I'm the new guy. I get to be the new guy. Ain't no way. Now's my time. are back yet again for the second episode of Kamen Rider Gavu. Now that the bombastic premiere is over, we really should start getting a feel for the structure the show will have. So now it's real time for real judgment. But first, what happened this week? When we last left Shoma, he was passed out from hunger when random bystander picks him up and takes him back to her place. Really? Really? Man. Are the Japanese really just as friendly towards homeless folks? Couldn't be America. And where particularly is she living at? Why, the reversible destiny lofts! Oh wait, that, that, that's actually her business. But, but look, seriously, this is a real place that people live in. And I don't know if they actually filmed the interior in one of these lofts because it does match the actual interior's look when I was looking it up online. But anyway, anyway, where, where, where was I? Oh yes. Marshmallow towels! Delicious, delicious. Oh wait, it's just a regular fluffy towel. I don't know how the drying's really gonna work on that, but okay. We now get presented with Stomach Indigestion, brought to you by Jello, as we are presented with the Stomach Family. Rango, the eldest brother, oversees the entire operation. Grota oversees production. Nidiv is in charge of R&D, while the twins, Shitter and Jeep, send out the collectors. However, there happens to be an unresolved disturbance in operations, since they are clearly looking for Shoma's whereabouts, while Jeepu concerns themselves with a missing agent. So, in New Girl's Place, she offers up Shoma's snacks on snacks, and some regular ass food, which, though delicious, doesn't trigger that mud gut. But there is the crispity crunchity hit of potato chips, which trigger that mud gut. Getting the buckets to conceal the fact that he's popping pellets like the laxatives just be hidden, but also hiding the evidence that he's done so. That is, until new girl gets a call that her friend got ditched by one of her employees, or rather another friend. But she doesn't fire that employee because I guess friends aren't really on the payroll, they just get a paycheck anyway for helping out. But instead, she's just gonna go do it herself. But look, Shoma can at least help. But first, she's got a plug for that bu- Oh. Oh, that's, that's not what I thought it was. I guess I can unblur it. Y'all thought that too. But yeah, it's a, it's a toothbrush. Now let's join in on the weakest plot point from last episode with Hanto rising in relevancy as their scoops are getting views. But, since there's potato cam quality of Gabu's encounter, there is more scooping to go about. Taking him right back to Hajime, still holding ground, defending Shoma without directly alluding to his relationship with him. Now back to Shoma showcasing off that super strength and speed to impress the ladies. Dropping a deuce at New Girl's place and getting that pay right after. But he don't really want that paper. It's snacks that he's concerned about. Since apparently him and his mom were forced to eat what I assume is literal dookie. Moms was remembering the good old days of junk food. So New Girl brings out a journal for Shoma to fill with tasty treats and remembers that although they've been chatting it up all day, they've never actually exchanged names. So she is Amane Sachiko. And Shoma's last name is Stump... Inoue! I knew it! Either way, she offers up Shoma a place to stay because she's all about making folks happy. This week's Renew is brought to you by Nightwalkers. Nightwalkers, 
the hell are you doing taking a jog in the middle of the night? That's weird. As his target is the newly happy girl that Sachiko and Shoma was helping out and... She snatched! Just in time for Shoma's salty stash, catching wind of the scenario, running off to him, and giving us night fights. Providing us with more fantastic fight choreography within close quarters this time. Snatching back up that girl glass, but getting that whip slash. Lucky for him, the chips pop off, giving us a brand new form that seems fragile. Oh wait, it's, it's, it's all about the angles. Giving the Granute one last chance to change his dietary habits, but with no commitment, he's got to give him the bottom of the bag. Finally freeing Sachiko's friends, who freaks out at his appearance. So he calmly leaves her be and takes off. As Hanzo remembers that his mom got snatched up by a monster 18 years prior, just in time to catch a glimpse of Gavu in the night sky. So, with all this, Shoma decides not to take Sachiko up on her offer, and away he goes. With this episode of Kamen Rider Gavu, we got the debut of Pop You Can't Stop, Zaku Zaku Chips Form! So with that, let's talk for... You know, when, when this form was first shown off, it was amongst my least favorites, but it does suffer from the angles base Gavu does as well. The face being so flat really just looks like it's a thin layer over the actual helmet, and it, that's exactly what it is. What I do like about this is the texture work once again, because while Pop and Gummy really capture the translucent squishiness to the material, Zaku Zaku Chips really has that potato chip texture right all over this thing. Though, I would say that this leans more heavily on Pringles and other Pringles adjacent style chips where it's more like a crisp than a chip and I know I'm probably gonna get some Europeans that are gonna say that it's crisps and not chips anyway but li listen here in America Pringles are technically crisps because it's potato product that's compacted into its design versus potato chips which are just thinly cut potato semantic semant whatever but then we also have the ruffles design on the eyes. But look, overall, it's a nice form. It definitely grew on me, but the weakest piece is really just the swords. It's, it's just an image on cardboard or foam. It's probably foam. And though I don't like the design of the swords, the execution of them is actually very well done. From Shoma figuring out why they kept shattering, to crushing them and using the crumbles like new type like projectiles. But the, the design, come on now, who actually would buy this? And nope, those of you that did, I'm not mad at y'all, but I'm extremely disappointed that you bought these. Rating time! This was the perfect episode to cap off what we began last week, toning down the bombast a tad bit for story beats and lore, but amping up the style even more. In subsequent rewatches, and just looking at what all is potentially here, made me hype as someone who loves looking at the minute details while keeping me satisfied in various fronts. Whether it's Shoma hiding his pop and gochizo, or fixing the flaw that I had last week with Hanto. And I can't believe I'm already doing this so soon, but y'all, like, this episode is gonna be getting the Super 1S! See, this is why I sit and rewatch these episodes multiple times before I give my formal rating. Because I need to be sure that what I'm feeling is my personal outlook and I'm not over or under looking something. See, at first I was hovering at an A, but in the rewatches, I still had plenty of fun. Especially at Shoma trying to hide them gummies just popping out. Like, I died laughing every single time. And no, j just a little bit of insight and behind the scenes stuff when, when I 
type up the recap portion of this. I'm essentially watching the episode frame by frame and rewound in several instances, just to get a lot of the minute details and to look at all the text and dialogue that's actually being presented within the episodes. Sometimes facial expressions or anything like that is another thing that I'm looking forward on here. And when I am doing those recap portions, I'm also doing it with no audio. And sometimes I would catch things that I wouldn't have otherwise because I don't have the distraction of the audio. And while looking at things with a microscope like that, I can justify why I feel the way that I am about this episode this week. So the show doesn't really take us as dumb as there are several things for certain here. Shoma is indeed part of the Stomach family, as it seems like he was about to say that his last name was Stomach when conversing with Sachiko. But then there's the aspect of the father being gone of the Stomach family being a net positive for them. Now, when it comes to the other Stomach family's relationship with Shoma, it seems virtually non-existent. That is, if they're even aware of his existence to begin with, because given in the preview, it appears that they are taken aback by seeing a red gavu. So maybe they were unaware that Shoma was even part Granute since he didn't need to wear a face just like the others do. But given that this episode really played up Jivu as a big player in the future with some additional dialogue, it might be possible that they might be one of the only ones properly aware of Shoma due to their relative closeness and age. Now, Rango, Grota, and Nirub seem to be the much, much older ones in this entire family and might have been more involved in the business than cared about what their dad was getting involved in. What is interesting is if they play up to the actor's ages, then Shida and Jipu are about a year older than Shoma, as their actors are 20 years old while Shoma's is 19. So he would be the youngest of them all, and given the relative closeness in age, would imply that the twins were raised adjacent to him. This means that we might have an implied familial connection specifically between Jipu and Shoma, and possibly even just the twins in general, but it seems like Jipu might be that lean-in, uh, which would be interesting for a future interaction depending on how they go about things. Then we get into the manufacturing of these confectionaries, as it seems like it's something that has been going on long before. And clearly, Granutes were human harvesting when Shoma's dad was still in charge. But one line Rango said really seems to show what's changed. They want higher quality, more premium product, which appears to be happy people and people that might have a more optimistic view of life and possibly have a support structure and would be missed if they went missing. Meaning that for a while, they likely were only hunting low-life humans. Those that were more isolated, depressed, and that no one would notice go missing. Then, we get to the Hanto of it all. Which look, they actually really fixed his character this week versus last week. Because he was the weakest part then. This time, he brought with himself the deeper story of also having his mother taken from him at a young age by a Granute. What's weird about this scene, however, is that it happened in broad daylight and the Granute didn't actually eat his mom. Nor did he turn her into a spice ingredient thing. You can actually clearly see that he just grabbed her and then kidnapped her. Now look, before someone starts thinking that Hanto's mom that got snatched up 18 years ago is actually Shoma's mom, she's not. I, it's a completely different actress. You can tell and I even looked her up just to be sure. Though the timing is relatively close, since she was kidnapped 18 years prior and Shoma's actor is 19, so it's relatively close, meaning that the flavor of the month back then was probably childbearing women. So did the Stomach Clan head just have a thing for human women, or was it that it was just in demand and he just happened to change his mind? And actually, if we go back to what I currently speculated on the premium spice, then Hanto's mom would have been one. It would explain why they left Hanto behind, because they need someone to miss them to make the flavor better. So if Stomach Dad already had Shoma at this point in time, then Shoma's mom probably started to influence how he ran things, and he lacked on the chains somewhat, thus leading to the current deficit in premium spice. 
That's the super deep thought and speculation that I had on this front, but there were some other things this episode managed to explain. Shoma's Gabu only processes highly processed foods. So when he was given a regular meal, it had no effect. So he literally needs junk food. While on that front, I did take the page that Shoma wrote everything he wanted to eat and Google translated it, just to see the potential future forms. So from macaroons, cheesecake, a personal favorite, eclairs, candy, kinda broad, someone named Gerard, and something wacky. Gum is even in here, and I think that would actually be a pretty decent power-up. Given the way that the structure actually works in gum, then I don't think it would actually tear apart. But it might be one of those where he swallows gum on accident, and I think that that particular gochizo might take a while to get made if you know the entire fallacy when it comes to chewing gum takes seven years to get processed by your body. Unless they pull a weird aspect where he was given chewing gum as a kid, accidentally swallowed it, and now it pops out. But yes, I do feel that gum is the more likely candidate in here to be one of the most resilient forms if it does end up getting a form in the future. Sachiko was properly introduced this week, and they did a great job in showing us what she's all about. Also, the fact that she wasn't the target for the Monster of the Week in her debut was also nice, because that tends to be a trope when they introduce new writer girl into the mix. Now, this episode did give us the intro with the visuals, and I know that there's people that tend to be hypercritical and analytical when it comes to opening visuals, especially since there used to be payoffs to a lot of these things in the past, but with Reiwa, it's kind of been pretty hit or miss when it comes to openings. But I do feel that with this entry having a longer production time, they probably worked on several episodes before cutting the visuals for the opening itself. So here's a few major callouts that I got from this. First was called out by my good friend Cloudy over on the Discord was the walking in front of Brick scene. The bouncing balls around Shoma would show Kamen Rider Gabu, while Hanto and Sachiko's are blank at the moment. Now of course we know that Hanto will become Valen in the near future, but this could strongly indicate that Sachiko could also become a writer in this season. The second is this empty lab that lingers on far, far too long after the stomach gang shows up. What stood out to me was actually the drawing to the right that shows what appears to be a fish walking on land, which implies evolutionary studies. This is potentially a can of worms, but the initial gut feeling is that this room belongs to the creator of the Granutes, and it came about from human evolutionary studies. Meaning, if Granu are already some specialized hybridization evolutionary line of humans, then that would explain why the Granutes are able to procreate with humans. Or it could be a little less refined than that, and the real leader of the Granutes was studying human evolution specifically in their viability for Granu consumption, or even just something that could help Granute society. There is the possibility that it could be the second one, since we know that they exist within their own world or dimension. And they have a doorway to what seems to be a multitude of dimensions. But the very opening also shows a destroyed world with all those broken doors as well. So the Granute homeworld could have been destroyed and they just settled elsewhere. After all, it seems like the place that they're currently inhabiting seems to be a world of illusion. Overall, I did hear the theme song without the visuals a while back, and I thought it was just okay. It's very two-note and doesn't really build up the hype for me. Even when just listening to the song without visuals, I already knew in which portion they were going to show us the villains, and yeah, that ended up being correct. But the visuals, though? Mm. Now those are a 10 out of 10, with the showcase of drama elements and more happy-go-lucky standpoints. It seems like the perfect hybridization of the feel writers have been bouncing in between in various eras. But yeah, this episode was the perfect episode to build off of the tone from episode 1 and also continue to lay the foundations of what's to come. 
further expanding on the characters, perfectly timed comedic beats, baller fight choreography with continued showcase on how these abilities work, as Shoma learns more about his own abilities himself. This was really just a very strong episode, and sure, I had my problems with Hanto last week, but this episode filled that in quite well. Not only that, but Hajime was here as well and still holding ground on protecting Shoma. The hype is indeed real right now and I feel that it's electrified the air. As I haven't seen folks around me this hype around what they're watching Kamen Rider wise in a while. But yes, before I go on even much longer and I still have this stuff to edit, those are my thoughts, what are yours, what did you think about this week's Kamen Rider Gavu? Shoma, popping them go cheesels, Chips, hitting those angles, and Hanto, getting that backstory. Anyway y'all, that's it for me, until next time, bye.